Welcome. I'm Gregory Mansfield. I'm the rector here at the Episcopal Church of St. Bernard de Claveaux in Miami. We worship here in the ancient Spanish monastery, a 12th century architectural treasure that was built in the 12th century in the year 1133. I'm standing here on the loggia where we find stones that were incorporated from earlier churches on the same site. To your right, you will see in these arches on the very bottom line, the ANOD, the Anno Domini, and the year of our Lord, 674. We've had continual worship here at the ancient Spanish monastery for 987 years. We're glad you're here to help us continue the legacy and tradition of worshiping Christ in his church here. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that as we believe your only begotten Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, to have ascended into heaven, so we may also in heart and mind there ascend and with him continually dwell, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. 
Amen. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 1. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, It is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witness in Jerusalem and all of Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going, and we were gazing up toward heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up toward heaven? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. The word of the Lord. Our selection from the Psalter appointed for this morning is Psalm 47. Clap your hands on your peoples. Shout to God with a cry of joy. For the Lord most high is to be feared. He is the great king over all the earth. He subdues the people under us. And the nations under our feet. He chooses our inheritance for us, the pride of Jacob, whom he loves. God has come up with a shout, the Lord with the sound of the ram's horn. Sing praises to God, sing praises. Sing praises to our King, sing praises. For God is King of all the earth. Sing praises with all your skill. God reigns over the nations. God sits upon his holy throne. The nobles of the peoples have gathered together. With the people of the God of Abraham. The rulers of the earth belong to God. And he is highly exalted. La carta de San Pablo a los Efesios, capítulo 1. Por esto, como que ustedes tienen fe en el Señor Jesús y amor para todo el pueblo santo, no dejó de dar gracias a Dios por ustedes, recordándolos en mis oraciones. Pido a Dios, a nuestro Señor Jesucristo, al glorioso Padre, que se conceda el don espiritual de la sabiduría y manifeste a ustedes para que puedan conocerlo verdaderamente. Pido que Dios le domine la mente para que sepan cuál es la esperanza a la que han sido llamados. Cuán gloriosa y rica es la herencia que Dios da al pueblo santo y cuán grande y sin límites es su poder, el cual actúa en nosotros los creyentes. Este poder es el mismo que Dios nos no mostró con tanta fuerza y potencia que resucitó a Cristo y lo hizo sentar a su derecha en el cielo, poniéndolo por encima de todo poder, autoridad, domino y señorío, y por encima de todo lo que hiciste, tanto en ese tiempo como en el venidero. Sometió todas las cosas bajo los pies de Cristo y a Cristo mismo le dio, le dijo a la iglesia como cabeza de todo. Pues la iglesia es el cuerpo de Cristo de quien ella recibe su plenitud 
y que Cristo es quien lleva todas las cosas a su plenitud. Palabra del Señor. Holy Gospel of our Lord, according to St. Luke. Jesus said to his disciples, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, This it is written, that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things, and see, I am sending upon you what my Father promised. So stay here in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. Then Jesus led them out as far as Bethany, and lifting up his hands, he blessed them. While he was blessing them, he withdrew from them and was carried up into heaven. And they worshiped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy. And they were continually in the temple blessing God. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. This morning, we celebrate the Ascension. And of course, Ascension 
ascend, it means to go up. And on Thursday, we celebrated the Feast of the Ascension, 40 days after Easter. And so again this morning, we hear those same readings and the story of Jesus going up into heaven. Sort of like now he's here, now he's going there, and now he's gone. And whenever I hear this story of Jesus and the Ascension, I can't help but think about Mary Poppins. In the 1960s, the Disney musical starred Julie Andrews. And the story revolves around the Banks family. There's Mr. Banks, the father, who's very stern and career-driven, and his job is a banker. And he's tough on the kids. And he doesn't show his love for them in a very demonstrative way. And the mother, Mrs. Banks, is deeply involved in the women's suffrage movement. And so she's been so busy with politics and rallies and meetings that she is starting to neglect the children. And the two children are taken care of by a nanny. And the nanny has just quit as the story opens. And so it is time to hire a new nanny. And the morning of the interviews, there's this long line of nannies all in front of the house. And suddenly this strong wind howls and this wind blows all of the other candidates away. And it brings Mary Poppins flying in from the sky on her magical umbrella. Now being the only candidate, Mary Poppins gets the job. And Mary Poppins came to mind because I think she's a good Christ figure. Mary is practically perfect in every way. And although she's firm with the kids, she wants them to put their best foot forward. She's attentive to them and she shows them affection. And of course the kids blossom under her care. And she gets the children's attention by magical things like cleaning the nursery with just a snap and also jumping into chalk drawings on the sidewalk. Mary teaches the children lessons like if you have something hard to do, do something to make it light. Just a spoonful of sugar helps the medicine go down. And then Mary introduces the children to her friend Bert. And Bert is just a simple chimney sweep. Bert is not the kind of person that privileged children like the Banks children would ordinarily have met. But the children see how much they love each other and how much they enjoy all of the simple things in life and how it brings them such joy. Later on in the film, Julie Andrews sings a lesson about feeding the birds. And she tells them about an old beggar woman who, sat, who sits on the steps of St. Paul's Cathedral selling bags of breadcrumbs for two pence a bag. Now their banker father had discouraged feeding the birds and giving money to beggars. But Mary understood that it was much more important for the children to learn to be kind. You see, the Banks family was broken, damaged, and dysfunctional. They weren't what they were created to be. And the bonds that were meant to bind them were out of order and nothing was as it should be. And when Mary Poppins arrived, she began to work on bringing the family together. After she's been there a while, the, the whole, whole household begins to function. The cook and the maid who were always at each other's throats are suddenly getting along and laughing and singing and working together. The children are happy. And Mrs. Banks even begins to show a compassionate side. And although it takes some work and some special manipulations, even Mr. Banks becomes happier, the true husband and a true father. 
You see, Mary Poppins worked at bringing the family together. She was about the work of a new creation. She was engaged in what we would call a ministry of reconciliation. And it was her presence that leads to the conversion of Mr. Banks from being this stern workaholic to being a softer man and a better parent and a better spouse. And at some point at, his, at the key part of his conversion, Mr. Banks even says, you know, since Mary Poppins came into this house, things began happening to me. And by the end of the movie, he's enjoying being with his wife and children and enjoying the simple things like flying a kite. He makes a homemade kite for them and they have such fun joining with other people flying their kites. Sounds a lot like Jesus to me. If you earnestly open your heart and allow him under your roof, things will start happening to you. Jesus is also uncompromising in his desire for you to be the best version of yourself. And he is attentive and understanding and loving. Mary Poppins comes down from the heavens into the bank's household and she saves the family. And when she sees that her work is done, she flies back into the heavens. So today, as we commemorate Jesus going back to heaven, we ask, why was that necessary? Why did Jesus leave? Why didn't he just stay on earth, walking around, talking to people, continuing to heal and to preach and to teach? Let's ask ourselves why Mary Poppins left. Mary Poppins had done what she came to do. She turned a dysfunctional and unhappy family into a happy and loving one. And although the children didn't want Mary Poppins to leave, it was better for them. In some sense, now that the family is on the right track, the growth and the flourishing of the Banks family was better without the charismatic nanny. You see, if Mary had stayed with the Banks family, she would have distracted them from being the family that they were called to be. And so she ascends into the London sky because her work was done. In the same way, when Jesus was with them, the apostles sat back and let the Lord do all of the teaching and the preaching and the working of miracles. But he leaves them to continue the work that he has begun and to continue the task of teaching others. And he doesn't abandon them when he goes to be with the Father. He sends his Spirit. In the name of the Holy Uninvited Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us affirm our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. And by the power of the Holy Spirit he became incarnate of the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, 
who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in the one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Prayers of the people. Almighty God, giver of all good things, we thank you for the natural majesty and beauty of this land. They restore us through we often destroy them. Heal us. We thank you for the great resources of this nation. They make us rich, though we often exploit them. Forgive us. We thank you for the men and women who have made this country strong. They are models for us, though we often fall short of them. Inspire us. We thank you for the torch of liberty, which has been lit in this land. It has drawn people from every nation, though we have often hidden from its light. Enlighten us. We thank you for the faith we have inherited in all its rich variety. It sustains our life, though we have been faithless again and again. Renew us. On this Memorial Day weekend, we thank you, O oh God, for the men and women serving our country in the armed forces. Protect them. We pray for Private First Class Dimitri Green, Major Joan Sparrick, Captain Owen Worgeson, Private First Class Sasha Antoine. Protect them. Heal us, O Lord, to finish the good work here begun. Strengthen our efforts to blot out ignorance and prejudice and to abolish poverty and crime and hasten the day when all our people, with many voices, in one united chorus, will glorify your holy name. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. We're so glad to have you worshiping with us this morning, whether that's here in Miami or across town or across the globe. Welcome. People are asking, when will we have services resume at the ancient Spanish monastery? That's what all of the email, all of the text, all of the questions on our social media platforms are asking. Our vestry will be working on our reopening plan next week, and we will submit all of our proposals to the diocese, and we will be announcing when that date will be, whether that is in a few weeks or a few months. Uh, a lot of things need to be put into place before we're able to do that. I imagine we will have mass in the grass, pretty much like we have this morning where we were outdoors rather than being enclosed in our chapel so that we can keep social distancing and people wearing masks. And we'll work through all of those situations we need to about receiving Holy Communion and safe practices. We're in the process now of doing a deep clean of all of the heart services and all of the floors with all types of disinfectants in preparation for reopening. But you can be sure that we will keep that information posted to all of you uh, so that you can make plans to join us when that time comes. I hope you want to continue to support us in this ministry here at the Church of St. Bernard de Clavaux. There are lots of ways for you to make a donation this morning. There's a number on your screen that you may text to give. You just put the amount you'd like to give and that will start a little dialogue back and forth. There are other ways to give. You can go online and give by going to our website. You can also use the information found on YouTube, Facebook Live, any of the platforms that you found us on will have that information, including how to mail a check to the church. Your support is needed now more than ever, and we hope you will want to make a gift to help keep us during this time. 
our offertory sentence this morning. Rinden al Señor la gloria debido a su nombre, traigan ofrendas y entren en sus atrios.
Blessed are you, Lord God, King of the universe. From your goodness, we have this bread to offer. Grain from the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us our spiritual food. And blessed are you, O Lord our God, from your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. doing that. That's for you, his name you're about to be burned. The special intention of the Mass this morning is for all of the men and women who have served our country in uniform with thanksgiving for both those who have given their lives and those who gave their lives to service. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that this my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Father, the Almighty. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at my hands for the praise and glory of his name for our good and the good of all his holy church. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and a joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. But chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious ascension of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. For he is the true paschal lamb who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world by his death he's destroyed death by his rising to life again he's won for us everlasting life and therefore we praise you joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to the glory of your name holy 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 lord god power and might Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Te damos gracias, oh Dios, por la bondad y el amor que tú nos has manifestado en la creación. En el llamado a Israel para ser tu pueblo. En tu verbo revelado a través de los profetas y sobre todo en el verbo hecho carne, Jesús tu Hijo. Pues en la plenitud de los tiempos le has enviado para que se encanara de María la Virgen a fin de ser el Salvador y Redentor del mundo. En él nos has librado del mal y nos, hecho, nos has hecho dignos de estar en tu presencia. En él nos has secado del error a la verdad del pecado a la rectitud y de la muerte a la vida. En la víspera de su muerte por nosotros, nuestro Señor Jesucristo tomó pan y dándote gracias, lo partió 
y lo dio a sus discípulos y dijo, Tomen y coman. Este es mi cuerpo entregado por ustedes. Hagan esto como memorial mío. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ and bring us to that heavenly kingdom where with the ever-blessed Virgin Mother of God, Blessed Bernard, our patron, and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. As you're not able to join us in the act of receiving the bread and wine of Holy Communion, we're placing prayers for you to make a spiritual communion today. First in English. The prayer of spiritual communion. May Jesus, I believe that you are truly present in the blessed sacrament of the altar. I desire to offer your praise and thanksgiving as I proclaim your resurrection. I love you above all things and long for you in my soul. Since I cannot receive you in sacrament of your body and blood, come spiritually into my heart. Cleanse and strengthen me with your grace, Lord Jesus, and let me never be separated from you. May I live in you and you in me in this life and the life to come. Amen. La oración de comunión espiritual. Jesús mío, creo que estás verdaderamente presente en el sagrado sacramento del altar. Deseo ofrecerte alabanza y acción de gracias mientras proclamo tu resur resurrección. Te amo por encima de todas las cosas y te anhelo en mi alma. Como no te puedo recibir en el sacramento de tu cuerpo y sangre, entra al menos espiritualmente en mi corazón. Límpiame y fortaleceme con tu gracia, Señor Jesús, y nunca permitas que me separe de ti, que pueda vivir en ti y tú en mí, en esta vida y en la vida venidera. Amén. Together, let us pray. 
Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you've given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord, to him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit. Be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. And now may the Lord Jesus, who walks on wounded feet, walk with you to the end of your road. And may the Lord Jesus, who serves with wounded hands, enable you to serve others. And may the Lord Jesus, who loves with a wounded heart, be your love forever. Love God wherever you go, and may you see the Lord Jesus in everyone you meet. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit remain with you and those you love this day and always. Amen. The Mass is now ended, so now let us all go forth in peace to love and serve the Lord. And on this Memorial Day, let us remember all of those that we honor this day. Hallelujah, hallelujah. <laughs>